As a candle maker, well, scratch that. As a human being, we have a default way of thinking about how to achieve our goals. Now, in terms of making candles, or any handcraft for that matter, and in terms of business, we focus on the specific steps and actions that we need to take in order to reach those goals, which is great. But sometimes we get so fixated on those steps and those actions to reach that goal, they will actually sort of blind ourselves. We almost get tunnel vision, so to speak. It can actually cause us to lose some creativity and start just going through the motions like everyone else. So sometimes it's just better to take a different approach, a different approach to help us open our eyes. Hi everyone, my name is Wade Thomas, the owner of Black Tie Barn and this YouTube channel, which focuses on candle making and small business. If that interests you and you would like to see more, hit subscribe below, which is completely free. And don't forget to hit that little bell icon as well. That way you are alerted whenever I post new videos. Would love to have you here around in the future. So I mentioned tackling our goals in a different way. Well, that method is called reversion or reverse thinking. Essentially, it's the opposite of normal thinking. Instead of focusing on the actions and steps we need to take in order to achieve a goal, we focus on the things that might prevent us from reaching that goal. It sounds kind of strange, but it can actually help foster creativity and add motivation because it helps us to identify ways to make things worse, which teaches us what not to do. If we avoid these negative actions, it can actually help us to achieve our goals. And honestly, it's just a fun and interesting way to think about things a little bit differently. So here are 17 things that you should definitely do if you don't wanna make good candles or you wanna keep yourself from running a successful candle business. I hope you guys enjoy. Oh, and by the way, it's probably worth mentioning that there is many more than 17 things but I figured 17 was a good place to start. Number one, don't test your candles. Honestly, it's just a better idea to kind of throw things together, hope it works, sell it to others. Don't test for performance or safety or anything like that. But really, if you don't test your candles, that's just a surefire way to guarantee Murphy's Law, which states that what can go wrong will go wrong. Number two, definitely do what everyone else is doing. There is no reason to stand out, do anything unique. Just follow the crowd, follow the herd, and whatever they're doing, if it's working for them, it's gonna work for you. You should mimic everything you see, labels, materials. In fact, make your product the exact same as well, because doing what everyone else is doing is how every successful business starts. Number three, be sure to ignore feedback from others. Honestly, most feedback from others about your products and how they perform, especially negative feedback, really just hurts your feelings and doesn't actually help you make a better product. Number four, never experiment. Just stick to what you know. That way, everyone else around can be the ones that take advantage of new technology and new products and new materials and new processes while you just kind of sit back and watch it all happen. Number five, definitely start tomorrow. There's no reason to get started today, especially if you've already prepared yourself to do so. If you've got some materials and you're ready to get going, there's no reason to go ahead and get started. Start later. They always say that the best time to start something is today. You can wait till tomorrow. And number six, and this is more so related to the business side of things, but if you're ready to start a business and that's where you're trying to get to, that's your goal, well, just focus on the business stuff later. You just need to go ahead and start start selling your products, and you can figure out some of the legal requirements and business things down the road. So instead of learning to crawl before you walk and walk before you run, it's, it's better just to go ahead and just jump off the edge of the cliff. Number seven, constantly compare yourself to other candle businesses, particularly the ones that are on a much different scale than yours. If you're a brand new business, just you working it, and you're making a handful of candles and small badges, it's very, very important to compare yourself to large big box brands that are pumping out hundreds of thousands of candles a month because you guys really are apples to apples and whatever they're doing should work 100% for you as well. Number eight, only sell what you like because your customers are also gonna only like what you like. There might be a lot of great popular scents out there, but if it's not something you like, chances are your customers aren't gonna like it either. Number nine, underprice your products. The goal here is to try to beat everyone else on pricing. That way your customer base will focus entirely on your price point rather than on the quality of your candles. It's a really great way to undervalue your product. Number 10, overprice your products. In fact, you should aim to try to be the highest price point in your market. And that is because you want your price to be the differentiating factor among your 
products. You want your customers to believe that you have the most luxury candle line on the market, and you would really want to make it difficult on yourself to sell and enter a new market as a brand new candle business. Now, speaking of the business side of things, is that not your strength? Or do you have any other interest or skills that you would like to pursue? Well, let me take a minute to briefly highlight today's sponsor, Skillshare. Whether it's business skills or any other skill you might be interested in, Skillshare is a perfect place to invest in yourself. From website design, marketing and advertising, photography, graphic design, running a small business, learning new crafts, and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and your interest. Look, I love YouTube. I mean, clearly, but it's not the only source for video learning and exploration. Skillshare offers ad-free learning so that you can just stay in the zone and stay focused, and they release new premium classes weekly. We all have different interests. I love finance, for example, and a class that I recently took that many of you might also want to check out was called Accounting and Bookkeeping Basics in 90 Minutes by Sweden Nandal. It's a great overview for beginners, which is perfect for those of you just getting into your own business and not sure where to start with bookkeeping. But hey, there's a lot more than finance classes to explore on Skillshare. And Skillshare was generous enough to provide an offer to let you check out the entire library of classes completely free for an entire month. The first 1,000 people to click on the link in the description box below or use my code will get an entire one month free trial of Skillshare. Give it a shot, try it completely free for one month and see if you enjoy some of the classes. So again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay, where were we? Number 11. Wait for perfection. This way you can guarantee that you actually never start. Because newsflash, you're never going to find perfection. This way you just end up in this endless cycle of product testing. Number 12, be sure to choose and settle on only one wick for your candle. That way if there's ever a shortage of supplies, which has never happened in recent history, you'll be completely screwed. Number 13, Put all of your eggs in one basket. Seriously, it's the safest route to go. If you only have one way to sell your product, then you don't really have to worry about other ways. I mean, why have a website if you got word of mouth? Why do word of mouth if you got a website? And who's got time for craft shows? I mean, why focus on potential other opportunities to increase sales? Number 14, just wing it. I mean, there's no real reason to have any documentation of everything you've done. You know, who cares about taking notes about your feedback or your testing that you've done, the results, or any notes that you jotted down? Number 15, keep your inventory and your cost of goods sold, things like that, just, just in the back of your mind. It's not really important to focus on. That way, if you ever start running low on your materials, you have no idea when you really need to order them, but that's okay because that's sort of like winging it. And we've already talked about how that's a good idea. And knowing your cost of goods and how much it actually costs to make a specific product is also not really that important because choosing a good price point to sell your products is just kind of a random number anyways. Number 16, when all else fails, just keep adding more fragrance oil. If you're not getting the scent throw that you want and nothing really is just hitting that mark for you, usually the best option is just to keep adding more fragrance oil, even if the amount surpasses the maximum capacity that that wax can hold. Really nothing can go wrong with wicking or anything else when it comes to adding fragrance oil. So I would avoid any of the manufacturer recommendations and just add the amount that you feel like adding. Number 17, and this is a favorite one of mine, is always talk down and bad about other candle businesses, large or small, whether it's your fellow small candle business or the large big box stores. One of the best tactics to establish a good reputation in the industry is to always dog on the other companies. It makes you look superior to everyone else and it gains the utmost respect. So that's 17 things you should definitely do if you want to make bad candles and definitely do if you want to keep yourself from running a successful candle business. And bonus, you should definitely not subscribe to this channel. I mean, watching, learning, engaging, inspiration, all bad, all bad. Okay, so that's reverse thinking. It's a different approach, but it's a little fun, it's a little interesting. So what did we learn real quickly in these 17 things that you should definitely do or not do? One, you actually should test your candles. Two, it's actually a good idea to branch out and try something new rather than following what everyone else is doing. Number three, you should listen to feedback from others. Constructive criticism can be your biggest tool to improve your product. Four, I actually do recommend experimenting with new products and new materials once you get settled and you're feeling confident. It's a great way to learn new things, new processes, and see if you find a better way to do something you're already doing. Number five, 
Starting tomorrow is completely fine, but if you can, why wait? Start now. Six, if you truly do intend to start a business, start learning the business side of things as soon as you can. The earlier you can get those things buttoned up and you make sure you're following what you're supposed to do from a business perspective, the easier it gets down the road. Number seven, it's okay to look at other products and businesses and to learn from them and gain inspiration from them, but try not to compare yourself especially when you're completely different scales, because it's not apples to apples. In this case, it's apples to zebras. Okay, number eight, it really is fun to sell and make products that you like as well. But the truth is, is you're also trying to sell your products to others and what they want. And you have to think as a customer sometimes. And if your customers are telling you that they like a different scent or a different product, even if it's not a favorite of yours, then don't be afraid to make and sell that product as well. Number nine, you really shouldn't try to make yourself the cheapest on the market. For starters, you're not gonna be. There's huge companies out there that somehow find ways to make 16 ounce candles for a buck 30. There's no reason to try to compete. Focus on a different way to sell your products. Number 10, on the flip side, you also shouldn't have a focus to try to be the highest priced one. Because again, there's other ways to differentiate your products from others. Focus on the product not the price. Number 11, face it. Your product is never gonna be perfect. All we can do is keep trying to improve it and make it better and better every chance we get. Instead, once you have a good product, get it out there and start getting feedback and that is how you continue to improve your products. Number 13, it's rarely a good idea to have all your eggs in one basket. Just because you mostly do craft shows doesn't mean you shouldn't also have a website and vice versa. It's always worth exploring other opportunities. Number 14, I definitely don't recommend just winging it. It's a good idea to keep detailed notes of what you're doing. Otherwise, you're guaranteed to forget everything you did last week, next week. Number 15, I think it's pretty obvious and goes without saying that you should pay attention to your inventory. It's nice to know and important to know when you start running low on something. It's also equally important to know how much that inventory is costing you and how much it actually costs to make your products. That gives you a great guideline and baseline for where you should start pricing your products. And it's just a really good way to keep your eye on the ball. Number 16, don't just keep adding more fragrance oil. If you're not getting the results that you want, try a different fragrance oil. If that's still not working, then try changing your process a little bit. Maybe change your wick. At some point, you might even have to change your wax. But I would never suggest going above and beyond the manufacturer or supplier recommendations. They have max capacity or fragrance loads on their waxes for a reason. Number 17, this one's always been a pet peeve of mine. I really don't like seeing others bashing others' candles. Now, that can be just peer-to-peer -peer, or talking about other small businesses, people just getting into candle making, or even the large big brands. That's a popular one for people to target and attack. And I get it, we're trying to beat the big guy, beat the big bully, but honestly, there's no benefit in doing that. It actually makes us look inferior and like we feel threatened by the other companies. I prefer complimenting others and learning where I can. Oh, and the bonus, you should definitely subscribe to this channel. In all seriousness, I would love to have you around for future videos and to check out the past videos. So if you're not already subscribed, hit subscribe below and make sure you are even if you think you are because sometimes YouTube will just remove people's subscriptions. So definitely check that below. And if you really enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up below if you wouldn't mind. Be sure to check out this next video after this one is over. And finally, as a reminder, if you're interested in trying Skillshare, the first 1,000 people that click the link in the description below or use my code will get to try Skillshare, the entire library completely free for one month. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.